In this video, we will explore how to interact with your documentation and code base using CodeLama, which is an open source large language model. In the last video, I showed you how to do the same thing using GPT-4 model from OpenAI. In this video, we will be trying to achieve three different things. First, I'll show you how to use CodeLama as a replacement for GPT-4 when it comes to interacting with your own code base or GitHub repositories. The second goal is to show you how to set up the proper prompt template for CodeLama and show you the impact of a wrong prompt template on the performance of these LLMs. And the third objective is to show you what type of performance you should be expecting from Llama CPP if you are able to enable GPU support. But let me first give you a very quick overview of what we are trying to achieve here. So in this case, we're going to be using this LangChain repositories and the goal is to interact with the Python files. So simply ask questions from the code base and the model should be able to answer those questions. This video is partly based on LangChain documentation where they have provided an example on how to interact with your code base. But we are going to be adding a few extra things and also looking at why the default prompt that they have provided does not work. Okay, so for the most part, I'm going to be using the same um, notebook with some additions. So first, we are simply importing different packages that will help us load uh, the code base. Next, we are simply loading our OpenAI API key. Then here is the uh, path of the repo. So I already downloaded the LangChain repo on my local machine, uh, and I'm providing the repo path, then creating a generic loader. Uh, with that generic loader, I'm specifically looking for all the files that ends with .py. And then we're using a language parser uh, and that language parser is going to use the Python language syntax. So that's basically the part that we will need in order to load the documents. Now, next we need to actually split our uh, Python files. So for that, we're using recursive text splitter and we're specifically asking it to use uh, the Python uh, syntax. Now, one thing I would like to reiterate is the way these documents are created or split is that for each given Python file, it will first look at uh, standalone functions. Those functions are going to be treated as a single document. Then it looks at standalone or uh, top level classes. Those are uh, treated as separate documents. And the third step is that any code which doesn't belong to a function or a class, that's going to be treated as a separate document, right? So with that in uh, mind, uh, it will split those documents into different chunks. And we are defining the chunk size to be 2000. And there is an overlap. Now, after that, we need to create our vector store. So for this quick example, we are using the OpenAI, OpenAI's embeddings. But you can replace those with any open source embeddings. We pass on the chunks that we just created, right? And then that will create a vector uh, database for these embeddings. Now, in terms of retriever, so instead of similarity, we are using the max marginal relevance. So the idea is that the chunks that retrieves, the two of them should not belong to the same file. Uh, and the number of chunks that we are retrieving is set to eight. So up to, up till this point, we covered this in a, the last video. If you are interested in uh, learning more about it, I would recommend you to watch that video. Now, what we did in the last video was that we used GPT-4. But in this case, we're going to be using Code Llama. Okay, so here we're setting up everything uh, in order to use the Code Llama model. So first, we are importing all the different required packages. For this specific example, I'm not going to be using any type of memory, and we're simply using the Llama CPP. So if you are not familiar with Llama CPP, it's a package or library that is used to load quantized models. It will enable you to run uh, quantized models both on GPU as well as on CPU. It had support for uh, a file format called GGML, but in the recent update, they dropped that uh, support. So now you need to specifically look for GGUF models. So, okay, let me show you how to actually get this model. Okay, in order to get a model, we're going to go to Hugging Face and we will look for our trusted the bloke. So he has a model uh, which is called code llama 13b instruct gguf so this is the new format that is supported by llama cpp so then you need to go here to files and versions 
in here uh, you have models in different uh, quantization levels so for example this is q2 so that's two bit quantized three bit quantized then there are four bit there are even five and six and eight bits quantized right so i'm going to be just downloading uh, this model now in this case if you see there's this k and m these are different sampling methods so simply select one of the models that you want to download and then click on this down arrow so this will download the model for you okay so now we go back to the visual code studio and here if you notice that i created a folder called model and within that folder i have pasted the model that i just downloaded right and in terms of the path you see here i have set the path to the path of that model so this is one way where you can simply download models locally and then uh, set this path to the path of the model that you want to use next uh, for the context we are using a context of 5000 tokens the max token i set to 5000 as well now i'm running this on um, m2 max so if, uh, in order to run lama cpp with gpu support on m1 or m2 you simply need to uh, set this n gpu layers to one if you're running this on ubuntu or windows then you need to look at the number of layers you want to offload uh, to gpu and you can set those in here then i am setting the batch size also i'm enabling uh streaming so this will actually stream the output word by word so in a subsequent video i will show you how to set up a llama cpp with gpu support properly on an m1 and m2 as well as on a windows and linux machine so watch out for that video that's going to be very helpful now if you are able to properly set up a llama cpp with gpu support then you should see that this flag is going to be set to one so that's the blast flag it's supposed to be set to one if it's using gpu okay so let's see if we properly set this up so we will ask with a question that is not relevant to our um, repo or documentation that we have the question is in bash how do i list all text files in the current directory that have been modified in the last month right so this is our question and when we run this so you start start seeing a response now apart from uh, the issues with the answer you will probably notice a couple of things it actually included these two different questions so it seems to be asking a question uh, from itself and then trying to uh, give us an answer but that's not uh, actually we were asking it for so this comes down to the prompt template that you need to use and we're going to talk about that in a bit now let's look at an example of uh, when we're doing information retrieval from our code base so this is the default prompt template that langchain documentation provides so if you look at here it says use the following pieces of context to answer the question at the end and then it says that if you don't know the answer just say that you don't know don't try to make up any answer and it's asking the model to use three sentences at maximum and keep the answer as concise as possible right then you are providing um, the context the related question and then we're feeding that into a prompt template so it expects context questions as inputs that's the template that it's using uh, and then you ask a question and that will the retriever that we created using the uh, langchain repo uh, as a source of information that will retrieve as certain documents okay so our question is how can i initiate a react agent within langchain right so if you look at the documents that it has returned uh, it actually are different parts of the code that does talk about react agent right so if we use an llm it should be able to generate a response based on that okay so i want to show you what type of res response we're going to get and also the speed of response as well because we're using uh the gpu on M m2 right so first you need to create a question answer chain so we are passing on the llm that's our code lemma then the type of chain is stuff the prompt that we just created so we run this chain and let me actually bring up the gpu usage pattern so this is basically uh the current usage uh so we are right here uh you see that it's actually almost 50 percent because um i'm running my screen recorder and some other softwares as well 
but let's see what happens when we execute this chain so this is the actual speed of generation uh, from the model itself you can actually see that uh, there's a small bump you see here so uh, sorry okay let me bring it here so now you can see that is fully utilizing the gpu however if you look at the answer so it says use the following snippet to initialize a react agent and it simply gives us a, uh, a single command uh, to do that right so uh, the answer is actually not great at all now the question is why we're not getting a good response now it all comes down to prompt template now code llama uh, and llama 2 they uses special tokens both for the start of system message end of system message then start of user message or user input as well as the end of user input so what i have done here is i created a simple system prompt so uh, the system prompt is you are a helpful assistant you will use the provided context to answer user question read the given talk context before answering questions and think step by step if you cannot answer a user question based on the provided context inform the user do not use any other information for answering user right so you could either use this or uh, use this uh, that should be fine this is going to become part of the system message but then you really need to format it properly so in this case what i have done is it expects the um, system prompt or system message and i am actually putting it uh, uh, in between these special tokens so that's the system prompt then for the uh, user input or user prompt we are going to expect a user input so that's going to be combined with the uh, system prompt or system message and then we are using these special tokens to enclose everything in between right so this is basically the template that llama 2 as well as code llama uses okay so next i'm simply putting everything together again so instead of the default uh, prompt template i'm using that as my template then you, we are creating this q a chain prompt so it's exactly the same uh, as what we saw before now here's the question that we are asking again so if we run this now we can again look at uh, the docs that it's returning so these are not going to be impacted at all by the system message because that's the uh, llm part so we are getting exactly the same documents that were returned before okay next i'm going to run the chain so this will basically create the chain and now we need to execute it okay before uh, running that again i'll bring up my gpu usage plot so let's run this and see what type of response we get okay so it started executing so our gpu usage goes up so basically it's actually utilizing the gpu in this case now and it started generating the response now if you see this response uh, is actually a lot more detailed and is the accurate response that you would expect from documentation so now you see here it uh, says to initialize a react agent you will need to provide it with the necessary tools and configurations here is an example so basically it's importing all the required uh, different functions and objects so the, here's the react agent then in this example they're using a lookup tool and search tool right and uh, here's the output parser that you will need so first create all the tools that you need then create the react agent okay um, and you will also notice that i'm actually getting pretty decent speed in terms of tokens per second so in this video we covered how to use code llama as a replacement for gpt4 when it comes to interacting with your uh, code base or documentation we also looked at how to set up the proper prompt, prompt template in order to get more accurate responses from the model and i also kind of showed you uh, what type of performance you should expect when you're using llama cpp on your gpu i'm going to cover the installation in the next video uh, so make sure that you subscribe to the channel uh, and turn on the bell notification button so that you get a notification whenever i upload that video we also have a great discord server where so i would suggest everybody to check out details of the server in the description of the video thanks for watching and as always see you in the next one